Well, good morning, everybody. Um, thank you for tuning in, if you are. Um, uh, it's uh, quite exciting. Um, I'm going to be starting a painting this morning. Um, uh, I hope you're all well, by the way. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got a board ready. Um, I'll just uh, show you around the painting area. I hope you can hear me, by the way. Um, please, if you can comment, uh, put one on saying, yes, you can hear me. Um, if you can't, I'll try and change it somehow. But uh, yes, I'll sort of show you the show you the setup. This is the this is a board. I'll take this off now because the painting is technically started. <laughs> um, yes, this is the the board area and uh, sort of studio area that you might have seen in my recent videos. Got a essential cup of coffee. Um, Great. Oh, I can see. Uh, thank you, Charlotte. Um, you can you can hear me. Um, yes, we've got all the brushes. Um, and uh, yes, I'll just take you back up here. I'm going to be painting uh, this this morning. Um, it's from a drawing from my sketchbook. Um, this is this is the actual the real drawing. It's sort of um, a five size sketchbook. And I do these drawings uh, to in pubs, cafes and things, sort of quick drawings, longer if the people stay there. These are from the life drawing class, um, life drawing classes that I run, um, sort of designs and things. Um, but uh, this one was done at um, the Poplar Blues micro pub in Beeston. Um, just people sitting there. It was really quite quick, actually. And then I photocopied it or sort of scanned it in and printed it out. So it's... Um, on a nice easy sheet of paper that I can get as dirty as I like <laughs> and uh, I'll in fact be drawing lines on it so the nice the nice sketch can be uh, possibly taken out of the sketchbook and framed at a later date but how I'm gonna what I'm gonna do today is nothing nothing special in terms of a demonstration it's gonna be just a um, the next picture I'm doing, if you know what I mean, and it's um, not um, not a special demonstration piece. This will really be this will really be a painting of mine, um, or it will turn into one. Um, now I'm going to sort of position the camera and get. I need what I need to do first is a quick sort of. I'll do it quicker than I probably usually do. What I tend to do is draw lines down these. Uh, main areas and they are now the the in the picture these are the action parts these are the main chunks where something's going on and we can do that um, vertically and horizontally um, for all the bits now it's it's a bit difficult to explain I will sort of be I'm gonna now in my eye line hold this up so this will take just about 10 seconds to do. I just need, need to mark mark all the, the edges of the lines. This will probably be quite frustrating for a second, but um, I'm just doing this very quick. Now what I have is on the edge, I can link all these lines up with a ruler. And um, this, by the way, is a piece of, it's a sheet of MDF I'm going to paint on. Um, and I'll just um, explain how this will probably go, probably work. Um, I will do as much as I can get through of this painting in in about the hour, but um, I will leave this as my demonstration painting for for these um, things. And this will probably take. A, I will do another of these videos to finish the painting. And um, it should be quite a nice thing to come back to. Um, right now we have these these chunks here are where these these people will be um, these figures. So I can kind of uh, sort of draw them again, but I've got a very limited area now. I've limited the options for where the where the marks need to go. So. Um, I know 
where to put the lines and where not to and it and it seems a bit um a bit of a sort of basic thing really but you need to know where things are and where things aren't and that is the, this drawing is pretty as you can see it's pretty sort of chunky basic lines and um they'll leave a lot of room for improvisation because when i'm painting it's sort of um i want to i want to rely on the drawing skills that i kind of i try to keep the drawing skills sharp in or as sharp as um i need them to be um in in the sketchbook and then i can use them along with the way the paint flows and let the paint do the painting up to a point. I can sort of control control what's going on um, up to a point. So I'm going to bring you in a bit closer there so you can actually see some, some of the marks taking place. Um, and uh, bring the lights a bit closer. Um, now I'm going to start in with a little bit of... Um, white. I'm going to use oil paint. This is sheet of MDF uh, primed with um, primed with acrylic paint, um, so it can. It's got something to sit on the top of. If you try and do acrylic um, on the top of oils, it just won't work. But when you buy a sized sized canvas, the sizing will mean it's got a layer. Of something you can put the paint on, uh, so that, so that it won't soak into the surface. Um, but these brushes, incidentally, I'm using um, these were got from Rosemary and Co, which uh, and they they are very good. Uh, based in um, Keithley, I think I've said that right. Um, and uh, yes, I met them for the first time at. Uh, Patchings, Patchings um, fe Art Festival. Now I'm just going to start blobbing, blobbing this on. I hope you can see uh, where, where it's going nicely. Um, and it's a kind of, um, this is the rudimentary marks in a way. It's the, the big chunky marks that I can um, have a bit of have a bit of a play about with um, and this this particular figure um, I will sort of pin oh, I wouldn't normally do this on the when I'm not working working in the on a, on a painting normally excuse me just getting a, another bit of a white tack to tack that down so it's not causing a shadow um, yes this this picture it's got it's it's really quite these these pencil marks i can think what's the what's the paint translation of of these pencil marks and um i need to i can think of these ridges in the paint that are appearing where you can see all the where the, where the light is um bouncing off it causing shadows um we've got um dark areas that are being created which mimic those those pencil marks so you can think of the pencil marks as a kind of guide um, sort of um, uh, options for me because um, I'm not really working to a prescription I haven't really got much of a I never have a plan for pictures apart from that drawing and the uh, the marks will build up um, and I will be able to keep on observing what I've got as reference and in this case it's been whoever was sitting there in the pub drawn quite quickly that's been the initial reference for me excuse me and um, now I can use this as reference so it's sort of transferring this sketch ish <laughs> and I will 
not be too worried about it being fairly different but i want to get i want to get the spirit of that it's sort of a, a kind of um, disintegrating figure almost um the the key thing as far as i'm concerned is to leave things open to interpretation if you if you're doing the whole and i'll keep on i'll keep i'll move this back a second so you can see me do the the legs um but when the when the camera's in closer it's um it's a bit better because you can see the you can see the detail of it a bit more i had a bit of dark on that brush already i tend to flip between brushes i'm using um a number what is it number one um pointed round brush and this one's a rigger um the rigger is called a rigger because it used to um, be used to do the rigging the writing on the ships um side of ships in the navy i believe i've heard that but i, I will also f flip between using a little palette knife little mini one um and these are these are good for creating different different textures um in this paint um you can kind of scrape down and get um, a very flat surface i'll do that now with the down down that leg part um but we're creating kind of and i can do it in pieces with a with a very fine point i can choose to get um a quite a, a homogeneous area of flat but it's sort of it does things on its own like like that sort of hit, hitting and missing on the ridges of the um where the paint uh has gone onto the mdf um that we've got now a lot of some might say a sort of it's it's a mess in a way but it's a variation of texture with um big chunks um and flat chunks and um we've got we've got the it's it's really quite an exciting drawing in terms of um texture this one because you've got quite chunky marks that lend themselves to to the paint anyway um now that is um that's a good start for that figure i'll sort of i'll go i'll do in i tend to work in chunks really and um I spent a lot of time talking about chunks. I think I think I think in shapes. That's um, thinking sort of big big pieces. And I'm excuse me another trip over to get the white tack there. Um, just uh, I'll, I've brought the white tack over with me now, so it's closer by. Now this this bloke. Um, Sitting on the right, he is. Um, he's got a bit more detail in the face, um, but we can sort of have um, this. This character, if you can think of them as characters, they they need to be um, individuals. Um, if I do the same thing to everything, then the picture will be quite. Um, I suppose if you're going to do, if you're going to have a character, you want to almost develop it like you would in a in a story, in a in a script. The the character would do different things, and a, and a good actor will you'll you'll not know them. You'll say, God, oh, was it was that him playing that part or her playing that part? Um, they'll have they'll have researched what the character is what's appropriate for the character um beforehand and that will tell them what's what's right and what's wrong and this this character has you know more about him because he's got more face you know it's a man for a start because he's got a beard um and uh, you've got thicker torso thicker legs possibly um but um It's, there's a lot of things you, you take in without actually being conscious of. And the, the 
gate, I think the right word is, or the the mass of the person will tell you what um, what sex the person is, how they're moving, um, and it's it's a com I find it sort of comforting that your mind will be <laughs> doing this for you, um, and you can or your your brain, your mind, whatever it whatever that actually means. And, these are the kind of things I think about when I'm when I'm painting. It's um, to leave the leave the picture open for interpretation, in a way. And this is a kind of this is a good base for. Um, I will try and just jiff, jiffy the camera up a bit so I can get this in much closer and show you the. So I'm going to go in and do a bit of this face. I think. It's whatever takes takes the interest really first, and uh, I can make make this face um, the the thing that um, keeps take it the the thing that the painting grows from, I suppose. Excuse me, just have a sip of coffee. And just a, I'll get a bit of um, it's a kind of mixture of um, brown and um, well burnt umber. I'm I'm terrible with the colours. I, I think of um, I think of the just the colours as blue, brown, red, yellow. But it's it's a simpler way to think. I um, I have an idea of a lot of the different pigments, but um. Uh, I prefer to think of them in a simpler way that I can kind of get get my head around. Now I shall start in with this beard. Um, what kind of very light, um, lightish brown? That's kind of um, it's a mixture of ultramarine blue and burnt umber. And then some white in it, but there's going to be sort of live mixing going on. It's it's oils I'm working in, so everything is staying. Everything is going to stay wet. Um, so you've got uh, yeah, live mixing is when it's actually mixing on the on the sheet or on the surface. And this is where this is where all the the, the um, skills you develop or keep sharp in the sketchbook all come into they all need they're all needed in this process in the in the painting you never you're you're always drawing that's what I'm I tend to tell my students um, you never can switch off from the observation the checking um, of the of the reference material, and this um, chap. I'll move him a bit, move him a bit closer still, so you can see. I'm risking risking touching the paint. Move that slightly forward. It does offer you more of the. I've done I've done uh, I've done demonstrations with art groups before where I've been on camera and. Um, when you can actually move the camera around, it gives you quite a quite a lot of options to be able to show, which you actually wouldn't get in a, another live demonstration. So, in a in a standing there at an easel situation, a bit bit of darker under here with the well, this is the rigger I'm using. And it's kind of create trying to keep an eye on where the where the darkest areas are on that face, and make sure those are the kind of those those are the first things that take my interest because they're the they're the darkest, uh, the strongest contrast. They my eye goes in and sees those first, and then. Then sees everything else. So I I kind of work on work on instinct. 
and I'll be you can listen out really for um, the, f the feeling that you're getting when you sort of move away from it the the feeling of this um, this whole sketch is with the two figures next to each other um, I'll just sort of come out again with the two figures next to each other you can see the whole whole thing on the original one there is um, not much privacy for them um, they're on show and they look happy to be being drawn I don't think they knew they were being drawn um, but uh, I sit there with a sketchbook and the more I go in there I get the more I get asked um, oh, what are you drawing and no one ever objects really because if, if you if that's if that's uh, you and uh, you you've been drawn you don't look like anything like you if I've drawn you Sort of darker brown still uh, from what was there before. Um, I'm going to work with the darkest areas first, so I'm sort of coming down, coming down this bit, sort of shoulder. Sometimes these chunks of pencil were a kind of just the, th the thought of a moment and um, done, sort of squiggled down just before the person stood up um, and I could hear them preparing to go. You can sort of keep an, keep an ear out for, well, shall, we, shall we go? Yeah. Well, what, what time is it? Oh, you, you finished. And you can hear them, uh, you can hear them rustling about and then, uh, you know it's it's a uh, time to get going with that that particular mark but again that's a sort of that's where the the skill in the sketchbook if you if you sort of can it this a way to define it is the um building up the muscle memory a bit like um or just like playing a musical instrument and i find if i i play the guitar it's a cotton bud by the way you might recognize it it is plastic, but it is a very old one, and they do go in the recycling. Now, this is good for... Because the oil paint is so sticky um, and doesn't and it doesn't dry, um, and it's very difficult to get off your... Well, it's not very difficult to get off your fingers, but it's probably better that it doesn't go on your fingers. This is a good little thing to just poke and prod it about a bit. To get a different mark from the brushes, and it's all about different types of different types of marks, as far as I'm concerned. You're building up um, a lot of different textures to contrast with each other. It's very nice to have you all watching. I'm glad you could glad you could make it. Um, Um, just needs to be moved to the side again. It's it's quite a sort of working a working process when I'm when I'm painting, and it's not a it's not set prescribed process where um, all the all the method is um, it's not just a not just an execution of it. I'm actually working out what I'm doing as I'm doing it um, and there for that reason there does need to be I do need to get quite a lot of energy up for it um, I need I need to be excited by the drawing and the potential of turning that drawing into a painting 
Now let's just go out again and uh, just have a look at what we've got. We've got um, uh, that body developing. We've still got the little areas that they're sitting in. Um, I'm going to shift over to this one. I'll just put the brush down while I move it forward. And so this um, character, I think they were looking down and reading. Oops, today. Excuse me. Um, and we'll swivel this round. I think we might need to come out a little bit further, actually, because we've got we need to have it next to next to the actual figure. There we are. And uh, I'm looking now. The first thing I look at, and again, it's the dark darker areas and um, so I'm going to whack some of those in first down down here I've got several pots of the solvent um, and I use um, the kind of solvent that doesn't damage your damage your lungs your breathing system it's the it's made of um, orange zest you can buy several. Um, there's one that Robertson's making, one called and uh, another firm called Zestit, uh, made of made of oranges, and it doesn't it does exactly the same job as White Spirit, but it uh, doesn't give you a headache. It doesn't smell. I mean, even low odor thinners that you can buy are really they. They'll give you a funny taste in your mouth after a while, and you need the window open if you're using them. Uh, this Zestit stuff is really good because it, it's, it's it's as powerful. You can use it to get. Um, it's it's more pricey than just white spirit or low odor thinners from the um, that that you buy, but it is it is worth it if you're just wanting to pick, especially in the when it's a colder season, um, you don't want the window open, <laughs> and the more, and especially with terps. I know I've spoken to people who can't actually breathe terps anymore because it, they they did it so much um, when they've been painting them that they they can't actually. It makes you just cough uncontrollably. I think I think it strips out some of the layers on the lungs um, but uh, probably look that up because it it's uh, not that <laughs> it's probably not that medically accurate my description now this this character doesn't have much of a face um, if uh, if you're looking here just a minute the, the, that is the sort of the head bit cross-legged um, so we've got a somehow conjure a face really from this um, or it's got the impression of a face um, we're looking I suppose a head looking down so what I can do it all I can do really at this stage is to keep an eye on this and to keep keep the marks in the right um, place in relation to the reference um, that is the that's the strictest part of this if I don't know what my next move is um, then I'm a bit stuck and it will then basically get into a sort of abstract kind of some kind of abstract painting thing that I I really think that abstract pictures are the, the, they're the, some of the most important ones to have reference for and the, I think the common idea of an abstract picture is people slinging paint or whatever they're using onto a canvas or a board or paper and hoping for the best or just letting things happen. Now, I, I like to let things happen up to a point, but I've got to be actually in control of it. Um, so one minute I'll be really... I'll be all relaxed and 
uh, <laughs> it's, it's all sort of, oh, well, it's doing itself, isn't it? And then I'll suddenly think, oh, well, I've got to keep looking at the reference. Don't let it slip because it will be um, just another drab picture if I don't keep an eye on the reference. And I've got to find it exciting, otherwise I've got no reason to do it. Um, and this is, um, I think, a good moment to possibly introduce some sort of, I've got some solvent here that I'm just going to let run down. So, sol dirty solvent. And I've got a couple of, couple of jars, one of a kind of, one that's got white paint dissolved in it and one that's got kind of um, sienna type brown and one that's a kind of just, I have some brushes that are, um, the technical term is knackered and then, uh, and I, when I need to do a big area, here's one of them and uh, yes, you can see that's uh, been sitting in the solvent for a long time. It's not dissolved the um, bristles, but it's, this is good for, and getting a kind of um, daub effect uh, when I when I really want to brutalize the brushes and that's what's happened to that one um, but ones that are this one is in much in a much better state um, although it's although I'm sort of this is yeah a, a flat one that rosemary does um, and it's it, this is good for sort of painting in you can paint in sort of pieces um, or it's good for good for getting a brick shape I suppose now let's just have another little look this by the way is my um, a paint paint stick or mile stick it's always called a mile stick I used to think it was a mile because it kept it a mile away uh, but it's mal or malen in German for painting, so it's just paint stick. But the little I said it on the uh, other video I've got on my YouTube channel. By the way, it's Oliver Lovely Fine Art on YouTube. If you'd like to subscribe to it, um, and I've just updated my website as well, um, OliverLovely.com. Uh, there's a lot of new pictures on there. Just gone on yesterday. Uh, but this little. This little hook thing is very good. I got that idea from an artist called Tim Fisher, who I saw doing this at Patching. So it's it's not actually my idea for the hook, but it can hook on, hook onto the top of the um, MDF there. This MDF is screwed to a, the board is on the wall by hooks that you can see hopefully, um, and then the board is screwed by mirror plates to the board, but it does protrude a little bit um, so there is a little place to hook things and down here I'll put that on and move this down you can see a little drip tray drip catcher which is just a sheet of thin MDF and some kitchen towel uh, this can be used for things like uh, a clip or just bunging things on if you want to be rid of it for a second um, and uh, yes, you can see the two mirror plates there. And it's it. I find it's a good way of doing things. You can also have a, you can move these. I have several of these pictures on the go usually, um, and I move them around the walls um, on these boards of different sizes. And when you want to flip between them, it's um, really quite convenient. Now then, just move this picture because I would like to I'd like to just disturb what I've done in a way I'm going to use um, one of the one of my other knackered knackered brushes and a good bit of um, white and the drip catcher is going to come into play now because I'm just going to allow this stuff to pour down um, and it's going to run down over what paint I've done. This is the kind of, call it white mix, but it's uh, it's got a lot of 
grounding. Now you can see where that um, solvent is sort of soaking into the into the acrylic. But um, it's nice to have. It's sort of in this this part of it. It's um, kind of process of seeing what will what will happen. And if I go in a bit closer with that, you can you can see it running running along. Causing a bit of causing a bit of a problem for the uh, paint that sat there, but that's it's quite good. It, I, I want it to be I want it to keep keep being organic, or to look nice and all organic, like the figures in it. If it's something that's been made by humans with with a straight edge, using a straight edge, then I'll I'll use a straight edge and I'll draw along um I'll draw along a ruler. In fact this this sort of drawing ruler piece of mount board um that I've drawn on drawn along many a times, but you can actually paint onto the edge and um print using using that um if you wanted to. It's all about different different marks different types of marks all working together because that's how reality presents itself um, to to the eye when you are you're in real reality if you just look around you now you've probably got a watch on there'll be shiny things and non shiny things um, in the room giving out light at different rates if I Pop in back here. Let's flit over back to the chat with the beard. Yes, the different materials give out lights at different rates, tell you that they're hard or soft. Just adjust this back up. <laughs> there we are. Right, oh yes, that's nice. Nice angle. <laughs> Right, and now it's it's a question of looking for some sort of medium, I suppose the medium detail. And I'll, I'll just say again, I, I apologise. I won't finish this today, not to my not to my finished standards. Uh, but I I never really know what the finished standard will be until it arrives on the picture. And I will I'll be kind of I'm sort of searching for that throughout the picture so it can be a little bit frustrating it's it's often uh, quite exhilarating just at the start um, so on, on on this process it's very sort of oh we're getting going getting some get some paint on it's very sort of you can see something coming to life it's that middle middle ground area when when you're actually searching for the these are all the, the rudimentary chunky marks. The, the next set of marks will be a lot finer, most probably in these face areas. Um, because that's, that, that is where I can actually describe the person, get more, get more out of the person. Um, I'm just trying to sort of flip it around to the cotton board. The cotton board can actually sort of, it mixes in the paint um, just so you don't have to get it on your finger, really. Um, and I'll need to need to sort of get. Uh, I can use the brush to sort of dispense a little bit of paint and then then mix it round. Um, so it's it's really important at this sort of stage to keep an eye on that reference. You can never really. Once you get into the habit of it, you're looking, looking, you need to drink that information in. Um, as you as you draw, and painting is still drawing. Anything is anything where you're actually observing reality and trying to record it is drawing, and it's it's only in the last. It's only in the twentieth century that it became sketching 
was um, you, you'll see sort of the older sketchbooks, ter Joseph Turner's sketchbooks. They're they're sort of water the watercolours, and it's uh, it's an idea of a sketch, um, but it's come to mean in common common lingo that it's pencil and paper. Right, I'll do a sketch of that. Then. So you can sort of um, you don't have to rely on the fact that you you can you have your next move planned out in whatever reference you're using. Um, so at that stage in a in a painting, when you're thinking, I don't know what to do on this next, go to the reference material, which can either be real life, a photo, um, a little still life you set up, or another drawing that you've done, as in this case. Um, but if you are if you are interested in drawing, then the only way to find out how to do it is to get going on it. But don't worry when when it doesn't look like you want it to, because it it won't immediately. And it's about um, going through the process and keeping the observation going. Um, and if you think you're sort of looking enough at something. Um, I'll sort of show you, well, my my head is kind of going from reference to the painting every six seconds or so. Um, but you can you can make it a little bit easier for yourself and just look with the eyes, just move the eyes and it's less tiring in the movement of the head. And these, um, I'll try and get you in a little bit closer on this. It's nice to be able to move the camera about, but sorry about the shakes. Uh, I hope it's not too out of focus, really. Kind of, there, is, there are stages to these paintings where I will, I will think that is, that is all I can do in this session. I'm, I'm tired. It's very tiring. Um, and uh, often in art classes, you'll hear everybody kind of lean back in their chair and, or at different stages, and it's sort of, oh, gosh, sorry. Uh, and observing is. Uh, really quite physically demanding and it's not really fair that it doesn't look like it is you just look like you're there um, fiddling about with a paintbrush on a bit of paper and it's sort of a, it, it should look like it's harder right you, you need to be sort of sweating to give a give an accurate idea of what what's going on now then Another look back because it's it is very important. Those um, the figures are sort of appearing. Want to get a sort of contrast on on the sheet. Um, when you've got a white background, it's um, quite important to get. Um, well, you can see. The effect of a lot of white um, next to something that's not white and when you can see that you can sort of you can con hope to control it a lot more and I need a little bit more uh, I need to get some more solvent on this brush which I have just done it's just gonna drip down a bit I can see these different parts, um, these chunky parts, I hope to be able to keep these and I've got the option to keep these and sort of sculpt them in a way, they're um, big chunks of oil. Um, so that will be, um, that will be dry, uh, sorry, that will be wet for probably about a week, that chunky bit. These flatter bits, um, or three days anyway for that. Um, these flat bits probably will be touch dry in a couple of days. Um, with oils, it's not it's not evaporating when it dries. It's um, uh, it's a different process. 
and so it does involve I think it's oxidizing I've heard the phrase but it's actually not a case of something a water-based medium like acrylics would will take the time it takes the water to dry pretty much and so it's so it's dry in a very short order especially on a warm day um, but the oils will stay malleable for you over a couple of over several days and for that reason I kind of because I'm painting all the time I started just to wiggle the if I've, if I've not painted for a little bit I'll worry that the brushes are drying because the, the, the problem can be it's what's happened to it's what's happened to these these brushes the problem with these knackered ones the paint dries right at the base of the of the brush and then splays everything out uh, in the brush so it's sort of um, it's a stiff brush like that and it's drying just down there pulls everything taut and if it's acrylic um, that hardens and can't ever be um, dissolved so you've got to throw the brush away um, you've got a little bit of a little bit of time to play about with oils now at this stage this is um kind of coming towards the end of the hour so I will and uh, I will I will promise to I will leave this this painting alone until I do the next one of these um, which will probably be um, next week I'll sort of wait until the the uh, it's a bank holiday isn't it tomorrow I think so I'll, I don't want to have a think about this one um, the uh, the um, I forgot my name but um, palette knife um, got no one to shout out you see without an art group it's uh, so a palette knife <laughs> this will give you an, the, another texture over the top of um, run run down paint um, and you can get uh, you can get an effect of I sort of learnt or well I, I this this idea of different textures altogether was very um, apparent on the course I did at Loughborough University it was um, years ago it was the illustration um, and visual communication but I I don't really do illustration I don't think now I never really got into doing illustration but it was a very good practical course to do um, um, for keeping things down to earth and you have um, A lot in fine art, I'm told on fine art courses, it's it's very easy for the teacher to, well, for the for the situation to become, oh well, anything anything is is good. Or if you do a bad drawing, it's still good. And <laughs> we, were, we were taught not to be very precious on my course about that's what they, that's what their words were. Um, but precious in terms of if you tried something and it doesn't work. Well, don't worry about it. Try it again and make yourself into a sort of drawing, drawing machine, a painting machine. But with this cotton bud now, I can smudge this as if it was um, pencil, really, and I'm getting a kind of. You can see how that contrasts with that, and how that contrasts with that, um, and you've got a lot of. Um, visual visual interest just just in those terms when you've got a lot of different types of types of mark um, you can think that mimics reality um, and especially if you use um, that a really a shiny um, medium if I were to put um, I've got a little bottle of uh, linseed oil uh, from Loxley um, and yes that is that's what the oil paints are made of 
anyway I can put extra of that in or let that run down and um, it gives it a kind of shine in places um, I could varnish the whole thing at the end um, but it's um, it's another option for getting something for explaining everything and that's what I'm in the business of doing now. It's um, I need to explain what is happening. Um, I'm just going to go a bit lower and uh, do some of the legs. Well, have a look at the legs anyway. So you've got a very big chunk of uh, chunk in this in this uh, figure. Um, they can sort of as as I go along this this figure with the beard. Um, he may turn into a cup more of an androgynous figure it might suit me to bring more more of a sort of feminine face or what I perceive as a feminine face there isn't really a, a definite um, definition of it apart from what is going on in my mind and I'm, I will bring my preconceptions to it. Um, but then whatever face appears, um, I will have to... I, w I will want to ride along with because I will have started something and uh, then the marks kind of finish, finish what's going on. And it's not always something that's easy to... Um, pinpoint when that happens but a bit of paint running over a, another bit that I have actually I've drawn one part and then a piece of paint runs over that um, and sort of disturbs it helps it on its way uh, it will look possibly more like a jaw than I have actually drawn or a, just slightly soften the edges of the drawing um, where that paint has been agitated by the solvent. So in that way, it's really quite exciting to see what will happen next. Um, but I do have to be quite careful um, not to just be painting for the sake of it. I have to keep an eye on that reference quite strictly. That's, that's where the... Um, strict um, cane banging um, teacher character comes out in my mind it's, it's sort of a bohemian artist versus a strict <laughs> head teacher but those two working in working as a, as a team um, it's not always easy to um, allow that to function and I will have to concentrate really and if I'm a bit tired or I'm feeling a bit run down then it's not really possible for me to paint things that I like. I will just be painting for the sake of it. And that can that can lead to it's not a, a when when it when it's a disaster, I think I think some people see paintings they've done and they look at them and there's no interest in it because it's the same mark all over. Um, is is often I mean the drawing can be the drawing can be sort of bad, sort of not well observed but that's changeable um, but in the in the early stages um, more likely to be changeable but if you are if you are making um, if you're trying to construct something that's convincing 
you've really got to um, keep a keep a check on how able you are to respond to what's what's actually happening in the in the picture because it's quite um, you've got to respond to the way the paint's running and it looks really quite sedate but the but the process can be spoiled sometimes often I will try and make use of the if it's a if it's a mistake I can I can sort of you've got a bit of a license more in the early stages um, to allow things to run about and then and then call them a sort of like a, you may have heard the phrase a happy accident before um, but the these these marks these chunky marks I will um, yes I will sort of prepare to finish this session um, and say goodbye but we're sort of I will be I'll be back with the next stage of this painting um, but this uh, yes this image will be the ne I think the next thing for it will be um, trying to find far more di this will be dry in a few days so or the parts of it that I want to work on will be dry but I promise not to do anything else on this I will go on to another picture um, I've got a got a, f a few on the go um, but uh, you can you can have a look at those on the on the website as I said before I'll just swing this round and say bye say bye in person I think I'll be able to be seen um, and uh, but it's yes the, I'm, I'm looking on my main computer screen and it's sort of um, I can I can see there's a time delay yes I, I'm actually I'm invisible um, but uh, I hope you've enjoyed it and uh, I look forward to seeing seeing you virtually um, for for the next bit of this but um, thank you very much for watching and have a good day or a good weekend bye bye